Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money, hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello and welcome to today's podcast. Thank you very much for being here. All right, you guys know the drill. Most of you have come back. Most of you are not going to start from the latest podcast. So thanks for returning. I appreciate it. Okay, we're going to talk about the arrival syndrome. This is so good. I'm actually quite excited about this. I might for fair warning, fair, fair warning, I might go off on a Mary Jo German passion tangent today. So if you've not heard of me talk about this before, y'all know, well, maybe you don't all know, but I am 100% German. And so I sometimes have a little bit of German passion. I'm not yelling. I might not be preaching. Some people think, oh, Mary Jo, you're preaching again. Not necessarily preaching, not necessarily yelling. It is 100% German passion. So today, we might hear a little bit about that as we talk about the arrival syndrome. Now, this is a continuation of Nelson's book study, okay? So we are now on the arrival syndrome. This is page 34 of Nelson's book. If you have Becoming Your Own Banker, I challenge you, if you are following along and doing a little book study with me, then I challenge you to go to page 34, read that, and kind of sit and ponder on it for a while. Now, remember, everything that Nelson is teaching in this book, he did in a seminar. (laughs) It was like two days, three day seminar. This was not, or 10 hours, it was actually a 10 hour seminar. This is not something that you read once and you're done. Farming without the bank is not something you read once and you're done. Because a lot of people read it and then they're done in two hours reading the book or they've listened to it for an hour and a half on audio. And guess what? They're done okay, Mary Jo, I'm ready to start. And there's still a lot of questions that you might want answered, and they're in the book. They're actually there. And this is the exact same thing that Nelson is talking about. So we haven't even, if if you guys are following Nelson's book studies, and I'm not doing them consecutively, but I'm doing them intermittently, right? And so if you're following along, I, I hope that you've understood that we haven't even hit numbers yet. We have not even talked about life insurance. What we have talked about is a thought process. And this thought process that is so incorrect because society just wants us to punch a clock and pay a ton of taxes and be reliant on them. Right? That's what society wants. That's what the or that not I shouldn't say that's what society wants. That's what the government has conditioned us to think we need by giving us all these incentives. And so Nelson is really breaking down this thought process in the first half of his book. And that's what we've been talking about. So keep that in mind, those of you that are constantly listening, that this is all, the concept is a thought process. The concept is not about the life insurance and the numbers alone right? That aids in the concept. And this is the part that so many people miss. There are so many life insurance agents out there thinking that they can sell a policy and help somebody, but they don't know the concept. They don't understand the thought process behind it. If you can't understand the thought process, you have a good life insurance policy if they set it up correctly. You might have a life insurance policy, but how do you use it? How do you utilize money? I had a call on Friday with a client 
we sold land, we bought land. How do we use the cash we have? Is it best to put it in the policy and borrow against the policy? Is it best to use the cash? All those questions are answered by the first half of Nelson's book. So today we get into the arrival syndrome. And it's funny because the, (laughs) I don't even know why it's funny anymore. Because Nelson wrote very specifically, and it's amazing to me that there's not more edits of this book. But he said, the most devastating matter that we have examined thus far, I call the arrival syndrome. This phenomenon probably limited the achievements of mankind more than anything else. When this thing affects us, we stop growing, we stop learning, we rot. We rot. We stop learning. We become complacent. I know everything there is to know about running a business. I know everything there is to know about farming, right? Do you? Do you know every stinking thing there is to know? And he goes on to say that there is this Ed Deming from 1900 to 1993, apparently, is when he lived. But he showed the Japanese how to build quality. So he comes over to back to America, and he wants to teach his ideas here. And what he hears is, but we are, we are already doing that. No, no, we weren't doing that. They were only taking a superficial look at what Ed was saying and jumping to a conclusion that they already understood all the ramifications of Ed's concept. Gee, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Oh, I'm already farming without the bank. I'm already doing what you're talking about. Based on a title of a book. Oh my goodness. I just did a podcast about keyboard warriors and fun suckers. And these are the very people that we're talking about. The people that have the arrival syndrome. I'm already doing that. You're making a bunch of money selling books. As I'm recording this, I've already responded to one of those people on Facebook yet again today with the arrival syndrome. The other day, I had six of them within minutes on a Facebook ad that I'm running. Six of them. What in God's creation makes us think that we know everything? And what a miserable life to be living. I just already know what's wrong. Well, if you know what's wrong, then fix it. Come up with the solution to fix it and quit complaining, bitching, and moaning. Fix it. But no, 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 we're not going to provide any solutions. We're just going to complain about it because we know the problem. I'm already doing that. Don't ask, what am I doing? Because maybe I'm not doing that. Right? It's absolutely crazy. And Nelson says, When he was in Japan, he found a culture that already knew discipline and was willing to listen and do what he said. Willing to listen. American manufacturers paid the price of their arrogance. How many farmers and ranchers and anybody in the egg industry, how many of you are out there paying the price of your arrogance? because you won't ask questions. In the business world, there are organizations that you can team up with. Millionaires get together and talk about what they're doing to create their millions. These are groups of people that get together and share this information. I have only run across it twice. In 11 years of working with farmers, I have only run across it twice where A farmer or a rancher is meeting with a group of people that are talking about what they're doing to get ahead outside of the Ranching for Profit Executive Link program, okay? Because I have a lot of farmers in Ranching for Profit going through Executive Link. 
But that, again, does not mean that they're listening and applying the knowledge because they've arrived, right? They're not disciplined. This is, this is absolutely what wealthy people do. So we have wealthy and we have struggling, right? And we can be debt-free. You guys have heard me talk about this before. You can be debt-free, but the homeless person on the corner is also debt-free. Thank you, Dave Ramsey, for getting us out of debt. Thank you, Susie Orman, for telling me that I shouldn't go have pizza tonight. That's awesome. Thank you, the penny pincher people that are all out there penny pinching. And I'm going to say this coming from a penny pincher mindset. Because my oldest children will call me Mrs. Krabs from SpongeBob SquarePants. Those of you who have never watched SpongeBob SquarePants, Mr. Krabs was the guy who would pick quarters and pennies up off the street. Yep, that was me. I'm the penny pinching lady. And it's okay to be penny pinching and be out of debt. But are we creating wealth? Are, is money coming into us? Are we doing something different? Instead of hating the big guy, the big farmer, oh, that guy is just buying up everything. Arrival syndrome. Lights should be going off. If you're in your tractor, lights should be going off. Flashing. Alarming bells should be going. Stop thinking like that. Stop with the arrival syndrome and start asking people what they're doing. Open up your mind to learning. Now, I feel really, really bad for the family member that wants to learn, that wants to grow, that wants to look at ideas, and they are shut down because they're the idea person. They, we can't trust them. They're always on to something different. Are they? I was on to something different. They might be the idea person and they might need somebody to implement it. A lot of idea people are not good implementers. I'm one of these idea people, by the way. So I have lots of ideas, but I need people to help me implement it because I have the big idea, but I'm not good at the details. I don't, I don't really care about the details. Like, oh, we have to go investigate, you know, the soils of the ground, or we have to investigate how to do rotational grazing, or now I have to investigate all these breeds of cows. Eh, don't really care. Let's just get some cows and put them on there, and let's just produce at whatever production I want, right? I'll have some, I, I work better as a team with somebody else that likes to do that back end work. I see the big potential in things, and those people do not have the arrival syndrome. The people that have the arrival syndrome say, oh, well, that can't be done. Oh, well, that can't be done. I had a guy the other day that was scared to tell me he wanted to grow popcorn because everybody in his family thought he was crazy. I thought it was the best idea ever. And I connected him with two different people I've talked to. One that grows popcorn and makes popcorn treats. And another guy that is going to food shows and selling directly to the mill or selling directly to the manufacturer who needs that product. Because guess what the thing is, is we have not, as a farmer, why aren't you going to the national food shows, seeing what people want? Because you have the arrival syndrome and you feel that you should know what we want as a consumer? What do you want as a consumer? What if, what if Ford and Chevy and Dodge all decided what you should have as a consumer? <laughs> so now you're just being told? But we love it when we can give feedback about what we want in a pickup, right? What do we want? Do we want a sidestep on that box? Do we want an end gate that opens like a door? Do we want a step that comes down because we're older and we can't just jump up on the end gate anymore? Do we want a toolbox on the side? What do the consumers want? That's what everybody else, that's what every other business does. And as farmers, 
we feel that we should tell people what they want. And why is it so bad to change? Why is, if that's what people want, okay, so let some people grow it. Other people aren't going to. What does it matter? Why do we have to have the arrival syndrome about it? Who cares if the next door neighbor has long haired sheep and that's something new to your neighborhood? What does it matter to you? Why do you got to be so judgy? Nelson goes on to say, Daniel Bornston, a historian, said that the greatest obstacle to, to discovering the shape of the earth, the continents, and the ocean was not ignorance. It was the illusion of knowledge. The illusion of knowledge. We think we know everything. I will never say to somebody, oh, that universal life is obviously going to fall apart. No, no, no. I got to see it first because maybe it won't. I got to see what's going on. I'm not going to say, oh, well, you want to raise hair sheep? Clearly, you're not going to make any money. Nobody else is, right? Or you want to you wanna run cows? Clearly, you're going to be broke because everybody else is. Really, everybody, everybody is broke. And I'm not perfect. I am absolutely not perfect. But this arrival syndrome is extremely, extremely harmful because we get so stuck in our ways and doing things the same that we absolutely do not want to change. As practitioners, This is probably our hardest job to get people to open their minds and take an in-depth look at just exactly what is going on in the business world and correctly classifying what is seen. If you understand what's really happening, you'll know what to do. Isn't that the truth? We either just want somebody to tell us what to do or we're willing to look for the information? What do you think big farmers, big business owners, wealthy individuals, do you think that they just sit and binge Netflix? No. Nope, they don't. They're always working, right? And I know that there are big farmers out there that it seems like they're always on vacation, right? Because they have somebody else hired to do the work. Maybe not the most productive. You might say, hey, I don't want to do it that way. I'd love to have that many acres, but I would like to be doing it myself. I talked to a gentleman who had farmed um, 25,000 acres and he quit because he said, all I did all day was manage people. I didn't even get to the field anymore. Right? It has to be for you. Do your due diligence. But you need to continue to learn. The arrival syndrome is detrimental. I am not scared to learn. That doesn't mean I'm going to apply everything. It doesn't mean I have to agree with everything. But don't just shoot your mouth off and say, oh, I already know what that is. Oh, I already know that person's trying to scam me. Because one other person maybe scammed you? Because one thing you may have tried didn't work? We wouldn't have electricity today if we said, oh, well, that didn't work. We're just going to stop with that process. We wouldn't have planes today if we said, well, that crashed. That didn't work. May as well not try that again. Right? Oh, there's no reason to no-till. That didn't work. No reason to do organic. That didn't work. No reason to AI anything. That didn't work. Come on. Think about it. Just stop being the negative Nelly. Stop with the arrival syndrome and be open to things. Doesn't mean that you have to do them. Just means that you have to be open to learning and think about, oh my gosh, what if this did work? Where would that put our operation? Where would that put our business? That's huge. Where would that put our fin- our family financially? Right? So many people say, I'm not using the internet. Well, guess what? You kind of have to now. 
There's not a lot of other options of doing business. You have to. And if you want something bad enough, you'll do it. I always joke that I am teaching farmers how to use the internet just as much as teaching them how to farm without the bank. Because I do all of my meetings via Zoom. It's like Skype. You have to get online. It's not over the phone. You have to have somebody help you or we walk you through it over the phone, how to get on Zoom. But if you want something bad enough, when I can teach people in their 70s, people in their 60s are text messaging me, there's possibility. It's just, are you open to it? And you know people with the arrival syndrome. Oh, man, do you know them. They're out there by the droves. Won't open their eyes. They are the keyboard warriors. They are the people out there constantly wanting to belittle something or just wipe it away. Really? I have um, a local accountant who told one of my clients that this whole life insurance thing doesn't work. And so she should not buy a policy. Well, she did. And it's come to find out that he had a life insurance policy. And when his wife got sick, he took the money out and he got taxed on it. He's an accountant. He got taxed on it. He said, well, this doesn't work. (sighs) He's an accountant, not a life insurance agent. You don't take the money out, you borrow against it. And he used a universal life policy, not a whole life policy. So according to him, it doesn't work, right? Because he chose not to learn anything. And because of that one experience, we now have the arrival syndrome that this is the most horrible idea ever. And it's ironic how he has watched her policy every year. And man, that's working. Just as it showed, unlike his. But because we have the arrival syndrome, he can't even call me. He was more than happy to cancel an appointment that we were supposed to have together with a mutual client. He was more than happy to not back up his client. But now he's wrong. 11 years later, Everything is going as it should. We've been through some good. We've had some bad now in March with COVID. She's been able to use her money. Premiums are being paid. Death benefits growing. Cash values growing. All is good. But because he has the arrival syndrome and a little bit of ignorance, he cannot even face the fact that he was wrong. Is that really where we have to be? And this very thing is what is tearing families apart because a younger generation is going to come in and say, hey, dad, look at this book. Or mom and dad aren't planning. Grandpa and grandma aren't planning. Nobody's talking about anything because we can't have change. It all comes back to the arrival syndrome. Well, this is how they did it. This is how we're going to do it. Get over it, people. Open your minds. And most of you listening to this are not going to be in that position because you are here. If you didn't want to learn, you wouldn't be here. And how you get somebody over it, boy, I don't know. I have no idea. As Jolene Brown says, maybe it's a two by four. (laughs) That's what Jolene Brown takes to her family planning sessions, two by four and duct tape. Maybe that's what it is. I honestly don't know. I've got those people in our family as well. And it's tough. It's very tough. Stay open-minded. Please, please, please. You are going to go further. Why not talk to those people that are being successful? What are they doing? How are they doing it? Education is key. All right, you guys. That is it. I have beat that horse to a pulp. And so I am done. If you have anything you want to hear about, email me, maryjo at withoutthebank.com. 
Um, and I will be happy to talk about it on here. Um, still working on some interviews, interview dates. Man, some of these people are not easy to get a hold of. And I, between both of our schedules, <laughs> it's that good. And so I am, as you are listening to this, I am still booked out quite a few weeks. So if you're going to order the book, check your emails. You will get an email with a link to my calendar and you are going to want to go on there right away and schedule an appointment. And then you are going to have about five weeks to read the book. Yes, you must read the book first. There is a reason for that, and it is because there is a lot of information in there that is going to be covered in our meeting or a lot of clarification, I should say, in the meeting to what you've read. And so um, please do read the book first. You can get audio. We have both books, Farming Without the Bank and Wealth Without the Bank or Wall Street. Both of those books are on audio. And so you can get all of the books, including Nelson's Becoming Your Own Banker, all on farmingwithoutthebank.com. So go there, grab that, look around. There's also some t-shirts and other things on there if you care to order those. All right, you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals.